Hey and welcome back. Today I want to talk about noise textures, why I find them so useful, how to write some simple shaders and how to generate them in the first place. So before we jump in, I want to let you know that all the files in this video are on GitHub, so you can download everything there if you want to look at it at your own pace. I want to start by showing you some example uses for a noise texture inside a shader. So let's create a new shader and set the shader type to canvas item because we are going to make a 2D shader. I'll set up a new uniform using a sampler 2D type and call it noise image. I set up the fragment function of the shader and when I create shaders I always try to build them bottom up. So my first step is now to assign the new texture to the color of the shader. You will see a white sprite. That is because we didn't yet assign a texture to the uniform we created. By doing that you can see the texture. You may think now what is this colorful mess? This is because each color channel of the texture has a different noise to it. By adding .r.g or .b inside the shader we can have a look at the different channels separately. It's maybe a bit confusing in the beginning the first time you use a texture like this, but in the end it's very practical and saves some space. I'll enable all color channels again by adding .rgb. Let's see what we can do with this kind of texture. My next step is to use the original sprite's texture's alpha channel inside my shader. To do that I write color.a equals texture and inside there I write texture in capital letters and this will take the sprite's texture. Another dot a and you can see the edges use the original icon.png alpha channel. Now I want to animate the noise texture. To do so first I need to set up a vector2 variable called uv and I use the original uvs of the sprite. I'll use this newly created variable down at the color RGB assignment and replace the original UV values. You will see that nothing changes and that is a good sign, so nothing broke. To animate this now, we add plus time to the UVX value of the variable. Now you can see it looks a bit strange, so we have to enable repeat. And ta-da, the texture is moving. My next step is to separate each channel of the image and have it move into a different direction. To do that, I create a new variable called new color and combine noise R, noise G and noise B, which will be variables I'll set up in a second. I set up the first new variable as a float type and call it noise underscore R. So let's write texture, use the noise image that we assigned in the inspector and use the UV variable from above. And only use the R channel by writing .r. Now let's copy this over two times and change it to the green and to the blue channel. Again everything works and nothing changes so it's a good sign and we can replace the color.rgb with the new color variable and everything seems to work. Now let's copy over the UV variable two times and let's make things a bit more interesting by subtracting time here and moving this over to the Y coordinate. We still have to rename the variables to be unique and change the shader code below to use the new variables. And now you'll see that each color channel moves into a different direction. I want to be able to control the speed of the shader, so let's set up a new uniform float called speed. I'll assign a value of 1 as a default value. Now let's multiply time by speed in each of those variables. After doing so, we can control the speed of the animation with the property inside the inspector of the shader parameters. It starts to look really trippy, so let's make this useful. Let's add a new variable, type float, called new alpha. 
And now I just multiply all the different noise variables. To make the next steps better to see, I'll comment out the color.rgb line and I'll be using the new alpha variable as the color's alpha. Now you can see where this is heading. I still want to use my original sprite textures alpha channel, so I multiply it with the new alpha variable. As you can see above, we have back the edges of the original textures alpha. In the next step, I want to get back my original sprite's textures color, and to do so, I'll just add color.rgb and use the original texture. You can now see that the effect is very weak, so let's multiply our alpha variable by let's say 10. Now the effect is much more visible. We can try to go for 100 and you can see a little problem. If a shader's alpha value is over 1, you will get some artifacts, so we can easily fix that by adding a clamp and limit it to 1. Like this we can safely play around with the value, create some interesting effects and not get any artifacts. In the next step I want to be able to set up my fox color in the inspector. To do so I add a new uniform with the vector 4 type and add colon hint color to the end of it. And now I can select my color in the inspector. Right now it doesn't have any effect because I don't use the variable. Let's do so and add it below here. Don't forget the semicolon as always inside a shader. And also add the dot RGB to get it working. Now let's reduce the speed some more and you'll see it already looks pretty cool. Now I want to replace the original texture of the sprite with something a bit more interesting like this light texture. You can grab this textures and many more from another demo project I'll have on my github. I'll put a link in the description. Now it looks much more interesting and by playing around with the colors, especially by using HDR values, you can get some really cool effects going with a simple shader and a simple texture. Now I want to show you some more example things we can do with such a shader. I duplicate the scene and make all the resources unique. Let's revert the texture change and go back to our trusty Godot icon that we all love. I also don't want this shader to use the alpha channel of the texture, so I remove this bit inside the shader. Let's add a new uniform, sampler 2D called gradient texture. Now in a new slot in the inspector, select a gradient texture. But wait a second, did you just see what I saw? You can also select a noise texture here, so why didn't I do this? Let me explain why. So I quickly set up the noise texture and made some little changes inside the shader. And while it perfectly works, you can observe overlapping and repeating patterns inside the shader. This is because it only uses one texture. While it's super practical to be able to change the noise's parameters, I would skip this technique because you have to use three textures to get the same effect as before and that is not very performant. So let's go back to our gradient texture and to our original plan. I set up a new variable to use the gradient texture from the uniform. Don't forget that a float is only one value and to make this work we have to select one channel of the gradient. Let's go with red, my favorite color. To make use of the new variable, multiply it with the alpha value and we'll have a nice gradient inside the shader. By modifying the gradient inside the inspector now, you can change the appearance of the shader quick and easy. To rotate the gradient by 90 degrees, I'll change the UV up here to a vector2 variable and I switch the X and Y channel of the UV. Like this it is rotated. Now by simply changing the color and the gradient a little bit, it already looks pretty interesting. You can also change the direction of the movement by changing the values here and like this you'll get an upward movement which looks a bit like fire or something going upward. 
You can also make the different channels scroll at a different speed, which also makes an interesting effect. Or you can change the scale of the UV itself, to have different sizes of noises. By multiplying certain channels more than once, you can also make the shader more interesting. Sometimes you also want a minimum value inside the shader's effect. To do so, you can just add a value to the alpha. In this case, I use the gradient and multiply it by a smaller number to make it a little bit more obvious. Now with these small use case examples out of the way, let's move on to noise generation. To generate seamless noise textures, I set up a simple scene, which I often use. This scene has a little script that just snapshots the viewport and inside the viewport is the noise. This noise gets modified with sliders, so I can play around and have a preview and when I'm happy I can press the save button and the texture gets saved to its destination. By the way, you can use this script to make screenshots of your game or screenshots of certain objects. This is very practical. After running the scene, I can play around with the sliders until I'm happy with the result. Different textures give completely different effects when used inside a shader, so I try to play around sometimes. It can be really interesting to add different kind of noises to one shader or one texture. When I'm happy with the current settings, I can press save, change the seat a little bit, press save again, change the seat, press save again, and like this I'm having three textures saved. Now load the three textures inside your favorite image editing program like Photoshop or Krita and combine those three textures inside the color channels of one of those textures. So I can just copy and paste over the textures into the green and blue channel and then I'm ready to use this texture for my shader. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something, you can subscribe to my channel and stay up to date with new tutorials. If you're interested to talk to really nice people, you can join my Discord server. It's still a small community, but some great people there. Let's have a nice hot cup of chocolate, talk about some good old stuff, talk about your games. It's really nice, so make sure to check out the link in the description and join it if you like. So that's it for today. Back to your project, rock some code, show it and share it with us on the Discord, and see you the next time. Bye!